Good morning. Please pardon my hair. I don't know what to do with it. I mean, I got it cut the other day, and I, well, it's bed head. I haven't brushed it, and usually I wear a hat. You know, when I was a boy, I never wore hats, and pretty much every day these days, I wear a hat. Mm, I don't know. I got so many things to talk about, and sometimes I've just got, you know, they're items. They're things I want to talk about. Sometimes I go into an accent and, you know, I become a character and sometimes I'm just me. Okay, well, I don't know. Where am I going to start in this video? I was looking into things and sometimes I just get lost in thought and I don't know where to go. Sometimes I look at the screen and I got little pieces of dust and crap and it's like I want to go move it off the screen, you know, and I put my finger up on the screen. And then I end up clicking on something, I end up somewhere and I didn't even want to go there and I get annoyed or it's like, oh, that's kind of interesting, you know? So, you know, if you want to be a well-balanced individual, you got to try and keep an even keel. And that doesn't mean you don't explode sometimes because, well, you know, my nature, I'm a Taurus and, you know, the nature of the bull on the astrological horoscope is that it's pretty much... Well, you play with the bull, you get the horns, is an old way of looking at it. It doesn't mean you're going to get horny, or doesn't mean that you're going to get gored by the horns, but it also means that, generally saying, an earth sign kind of person is pretty much calm, pretty much stable, but there's a volcano on the earth. There's lots of volcanoes, and if you hit the time when the earth is exploding in a volcano, look out! You know, so, you know, when I explode, I'm sorry, but, you know, it's really sort of beyond my control. You know, when you're having a meltdown, you know, you're having a meltdown, and, you know, you just get possessed by the volcano. Don't be too concerned, because, you know, the simple fact is that, man, that's a really bad case of bad. Sometimes I have ideas that I want to talk about, and I have a big long list, and you know, I can't write everything down, there's just, the, the ideas come fast and furious, and you know, sometimes in the mornings my hands don't really work that good, I can't say even when they warmed up they work so good, I don't know, like why is it that I go into the fridge a million times, do you think the muscle memory would be perfect, and when I go pull out the milk, that, you know, I'm not going to spill it all over, but, you know, the other day, that's what I did. I pulled it out, and I spilled the milk. I, I can't explain it. Why is it? Why do these things happen? I don't know. Now I got somebody on the radio starting to yip. Yipping is basically talking and just talking and yipping. So, you know, I'm not going to tell you about how things go. I mean, I try and figure it out. You can't figure out this world. It's too much alternative theories everybody's got an alternative theory about this that and the next thing you know is there a universal truth i can't say so i mean even the physicists can't come up with a universal field of energy theory to explain all the physics that they got they got sub theories and you know they work in sort of specific circumstances but the grand unified theory, nobody can come up with it. You know, there's koopy, koopy people on the internet that say, okay, well, it's, the sun isn't exactly a fusion reactor like they teach you in high school. It's like an electric universe. And, you know, so there's the electric sun theories. And, you know, there's, oh, my God. I mean, you go into the internet and you think it's a good idea. You know, you got Wikipedia and you got Snopes. You got different places you can check the Google but to tell you the truth, there's no place where they, they can come to you and they can say this is what it really is. I mean, even when they prove theories, then there's always an exception to the theory. So, you know, it's very hard to be human because there's no good answers. You know, basically, when you know you're going to go and flip the light switch, the lights are going to come on pretty much. But, you know, maybe you're in the middle of a power failure and you didn't figure it out. You know, because you just woke up and then you turn the light on and it doesn't come on. So you think, well, maybe the light bulb blew, but usually when the light bulb blows, it goes like, whoosh, it's like a supernova for a second and then it blows. But sometimes it blows just quietly or, you know, can't explain it. Or sometimes 
Okay, I'll give you a weird one. The other day I was at karaoke, and I, I, I was speaking along a little bit ad-libbing when there wasn't like the, the, the song part, and I was going to say, son of a bitch. And at that time, I said son of a bitch into the microphone, and I could hear it in my ears, but I heard the microphone edit out son of a bitch. It was like, well, I thought maybe the batteries are dead, but it went back and it worked right after I finished saying son of a bitch. The microphone, it reactivated itself, so it had something in it that said, I don't want to magnify you saying son of a bitch to the whole bar. This is my experience. It's kooky. You know, like, why is it at that exact moment the batteries in the microphone went dead and, you know, edited out me yelling out son of a bitch? I don't know. I can't explain these things. You know, I've got a Bachelor of Science and doesn't mean that I know too much more than you do. You know, I've been reading metaphysical stuff. I know I got this book here. It's about magic in the occult. You know, here it is. It's a new book, and I, I thought last night maybe I would get into this book, and I opened it up, and I read, like, the front cover there, just to, the inside of the front cover to find out what it was about, and I thought, this is interesting. But the next thing you know, some other idea possessed me, and it's like, no, you got to go out to karaoke. So I lay down for five minutes to have a quick power nap, and you never know if power nap's going to turn into like a five-minute or if it's going to be like an all-nighter and you don't wake up till noon tomorrow, you know, no. You know, but I did go out and I went down to the Dragon's Den and I was all set to do karaoke. Well, it's their UFC and some nights on Saturday night they got the karaoke and some nights they got the UFC. Some nights the UFC you got to pay $25 to watch and other nights like you, last night it was free. Why is that? I can't explain. It's just too kooky. You know, you try and figure out what you're going to do for the day, and I hate to commit to people and say, you know, like my cousin Jim said, well, let's go fishing tomorrow. That's today. And do I want to go fishing? Well, I was thinking, you know, this time of year, April, you can go out and there's still ice on the lakes. And no one say, you know, when the ice is going to go punky and you're going to fall in. But, you know, when you get two or three feet of ice built up over a winter that's I mean that's a lot of ice and you know it can handle a little bit of heat and yesterday it got up to 60 degrees Fahrenheit but last night it got bloody cold way below freezing so you know this is a weird time of year around here but this is also the time of year at the ski hill or out ice fishing that you'll see people wearing shorts and t-shirts or somebody will even take their shirt off you know you're standing on ice few feet thick and it's warm it's over 60 degrees Fahrenheit whatever that is in Celsius now I, when I went to school it was kind of a kooky time it was like the Canadian government decided they were going to go to the metric system and go off imperial system and nobody said that our friends in the United States decided that they were going to stay on the imperial system but they don't like to call it imperial system because they basically didn't want anything to do with imperial britain and that's why they became independent but for all intents and purposes you know well i mean there's an imperial gallon which is a different kind of gallon than a u.s gallon they're like both gallons but they're not equivalent there's a canadian dollar and a u.s dollar they're both dollars, but they're not equivalent. I mean, you can go to the bank or, you know, the currency exchange place and they'll give you an exchange, but you know that it's never the same thing twice. Back in the old days, they used to peg it, you know, like, I don't know, like 80 cents for one dollar kind of thing, and that was what it was pegged forever, and then they used to peg it on what they called the gold standard. So, like, the U.S. dollar was pegged to ounces of gold and then there's different kinds of ounces there's regular ounces imperial ounces and then there's troy ounces and they're not the same so you know what's an ounce of gold well it depends you have to be very specific and you know anyway i was talking about what well, was 35 dollars us per ounce of gold so it was pegged and then when richard nixon was the president and he was like finding out that he was having trouble with his banking because they were spending so much money building the military up to fight the war in Vietnam, plus to go and build a big nuclear 
well, I can't remember the name, but it was basically, you know, the they, they didn't want to have it. Well, I don't know. Anyway, the point of it all was that he spent them into into a lot of debt, and they they were coming to the point where they said the only way we continue to spend money on the military is we got to go and delink from gold. So the, I think it was 1973 they took the U.S. dollar off the gold standard, but the economists said, well, you know. It's kind of stupid to peg your your currency to gold because it's not really that much of a useful thing. You can't eat gold, you know. It's I mean it's got certain metallic properties that are interesting, you know. It's a very good conductor of electricity. It pretty much is uh, immune to oxidation by air. It's kind of a pretty color. No one says it's like always pretty. Sometimes you get gold and you think, well, with my skin color, some people say, well, silver is a better better color for you if you're going to be wearing earrings. And it's like, but if I get a suntan and I look a bit more tan, then the gold might look cute. So you got to check it out. That's what they always say. Anyway, so we're talking about fiat currencies now because all the, the world currencies are the only thing they're backed by is like government's promise to pay you back and you know that one's really hard to figure it out they're also backed by the fact that pretty much they're they're changeable by the money changers the banks and the currency exchangers and things you know so the basically they're they're backed by other currencies the ability to trade into other currencies you know there's no there's thing bitcoin and some of them are backed by gold and some of them are just backed by whatever name they are no one says that they're any better than any other kind of currencies. I mean, I can't really go to the dollar store and spend it, although somebody has maybe invented a credit card that's, that, that's a Bitcoin credit card that automatically converts to dollars and things. But I don't have one of them. And, you know, I've heard about it, but I haven't seen my, one of my banks offer it. And, you know, even if they did, I hate carrying all the cards that I got now in my wallet, you know, like... It's 2018, why do I have to carry identification? You know, they've got all these Palantir computer-generated satellites that are watching us all the time, not to mention the ones operated by, you know, hidden cameras here and there. And they got this computer-generated thing that will scan your face and they can scan it and they can see who you are. It's all done by the computer. And then they got kooky things, you know, like... I'll have to post it, but I'm gonna put it on Instagram maybe. You go Instagram Burroughs Bobby, you know, and take a look. Well, I was at the Shoppers Drug Mart yesterday, and as I was walking out, I was I got reminded that my passport's expired and I wanna get it updated, and they take passport photos for $19.99 at Shoppers Drug Mart. Okay, well why is it that I gotta to go to Shoppers Drug Mart to get an old school paper photograph of myself and no one say but you're, you're not allowed to smile at all well, anyway why is it that when I get my driver's license for the province of Ontario or my health card for the province of Ontario it's picture ID and they use a digital camera with the flash right there and they take your picture and then they go and they put it together for you and they send it to you in the mail but why is it with the passport office I gotta go and pay shoppers drug mart because I can't use, well, nobody really has the old school cameras that you go and develop the film, but they got the thing, and you got to get that old school kind of photograph and pay for it. You used to have to get somebody to sign the back of it, and I don't think you have to do that anymore, so the rules are constantly changing. But anyway, you got to do that, and then you got to take it to the passport office, and they go and laminate it or something, so that, uh, you know, that's how they make the passport. Why don't they have the electronic camera at the passport office? You you pay them a hundred bucks or whatever it is. Why don't they just take your electronic picture like what they do for the province for your for your driver's license? I can't understand it. It's Mickey Mouse and it's just Luddite and backwards and screwy, but that's the federal government for you. You know, then they go and they say, well, we don't run passports anymore because we got this independent thing the passport office, like a crown corporation in charge of passports. 
So you can't even complain to the government ombudsman because it's an arm's length thing. The government sets up all these arm's length agencies and boards and things. There used to be a, a band that was called the Boards of Canada, and it's true. Canada's got so many boards, nobody can keep track of them, and, they, and they've all got their little, you know, they're sort of semi-judicial, and you know, you, you can't even go to a regular court to go and overturn what one of these things are. There's labor relations boards, and I don't know, there's like boards, the film boards, and there's the milk marketing boards. They set up all these things, and then, you know, this is why I think we should be sovereign citizens and get rid of the government, because there's so many regulations by people who are saying, well, I'm regulating the milk that you buy, and, you know, I can't go anywhere else and buy my milk because it's all regulated here. But who's the regulator? It's the milk marketing board. It's set up by the government, but I've got no say. You know, I, they don't, there's no democracy with it. I can't vote on it. I can't say, I don't want to be part of your goddamn milk marketing board. Thank you very much. But somebody else has it in their infinite wisdom decided that, you know, I'm less of a person. I don't get a say in the food that I want to eat. You know, I'm not given the option of even being able to tell whether the milk I'm buying has got GMO in it or if it's got bovine homotrophic facilities that go and, and you know, are growth hormones for the beef. I don't know what the hell's in the milk. You know, I don't know what the hell it is. They won't tell you. It just says it's milk, you know. But the milk marketing board, I got to buy it from the milk marketing board that goes through the Safeway. And it's overinflated prices, I'll tell you. We pay way more for milk than you do in the United States. But God knows the milk that I've seen the videos of these the, the, the animal husbandry in the States and these enormous pig farms that have they produce so much pig shit, it pollutes the rivers. And you know, like you look at the pictures of the fields that the animals are walking around on and it's just bare earth because there's no more grass but maybe it was taken in the spring before the grass grew i don't know i mean people go and they they they're spin doctors right they'll go and they'll take some video and it'll look horrible and you know it's a certain circumstances like i said maybe it's like february and there's no snow on the ground and it looks like that's why there's no grass there and the animals are out for a walk, but it's February, but they don't tell you that. They just say, oh, okay, this is an example of why you shouldn't have milk in your diet because the animals don't live on a nice pasture. And it's February, there's no pasture, it's cold, it's below freezing. But they don't tell you that, but they spin doctor it for you so you, that they try and con control you to their way of looking at things. So, you know, you can't trust anyone, don't trust the government, but you can't live without the government either because there's certain things you need from the government. You know, like, you know, if you've got a fire and, you know, you can't handle it yourself, you want the fire department and you're really glad they're there and, you know, they show up and they come quickly or else you pass out or some of your friends pass out and you need some help. And, you know, the policeman comes and the ambulance comes and the fire department comes you know, essential services, and you're glad for them. But, you know, you're mighty pissed off when you're going, like, a few kilometers an hour of the speed limit, and Mr. Police Officer pulls you over and gives you a ticket for $150. You're like, I'm not going to say that, but that's how you feel. You think the guy is an asshole. Or, you know, the ones that park in speed traps, or, you know, different places where they know that people sort of, you know, like... Stop signs, you know, you go into a residential area and you look around and there's nobody else around. There's no other cars around. It's completely quiet. And well, I've got one outside my house and I'll tell you, it's terrible because there's a stop sign there and some people blow right through it and they're going way faster than they should in a residential area. So you think, okay, well, it's nice to have the police come in and enforce this thing and they'll come. But there's other times when, you know, I'm not going to say it's me, but it's me. I come up to a stop sign and I do, like, I come all the way, almost completely to a complete stop. Almost completely. So I'm going like one-tenth of one mile per hour or something, or even slower. But I just don't feel that little, you know, when you come to a complete stop and you've got too much brake on, the car kind of goes jolt. And if I don't feel that, then I'm going, okay, well, did I stop? And I just did it perfectly so I didn't hit the brake too much. So that the car stopped and I just stopped. Or did I have a little 
teeny bit of forward motion still, and then I didn't really stop completely. And, you know, is it a judgment call? I don't know, but to me it's like, I don't know. And that, in the parlance of the police, is called a California roll, which is also a kind of sushi. Oh, uh, I mean, I could go on, I could sit here and video, I mean, it's been 20 minutes of me yipping about various topics, and God knows, sometimes there's times when I can't seem to get a word out at all, I'm just sitting there, and I got nothing to say, and people say, oh, you're so quiet, why did you go to the party, and you're so quiet, you know, so-and-so yapped all the time, and you never said nothing, one part of me is like, well, that person yapped so much, I can't get a word in edgewise, and I just give up, other times it's like, oh, it's literally true well, I had nothing to say I might have had a thought or two but maybe I had no thoughts and you know sometimes I go to the bar and I think you know I really want to make friends and I want to be like talkative and you know so you know in the back of my mind I, I kind of think okay well I'm gonna go over and say hello to this person and I, you know I maybe I sometimes I even got something I want to say but you know, sometimes I go up to that person, and even if they're not talking to somebody else, sometimes you gotta wait for a break in the action, and then the minute that you wanna speak, somebody else speaks at the exact same time, and you're going, oh, I was gonna talk, and then I can't talk, and I gotta wait, I gotta wait. Oh, well, it drives you bonkers. And other times you go up there, and you got something in your head, and it's like, whoop, whatever that idea was, it's gone. It's gone and you can't think and you're like, oh, now I'm an idiot because I don't know what I was going to say and here I'm standing here looking into your eyes about to say something and then, you know, a brain fart happens and I can't talk. Or and all the time you go up there and you got the perfectly good thing in your head that you're going to ask and there's no one else there, it's just you and that other person and it's like your mouth won't move. You know, it's like... Well, I want to start talking, and then you think, well, I'll just, I'll just open my mouth and see if, the, if I can, like, promote it to talk. And you're just like, the slack-jawed yokel, and nothing comes out. Other times, it's like right now, it's like, you know, some people call it verbal diarrhea, because you just can't shut up. You know, and then there's people that are not talkative very much, and then they say, oh, but, you know, I got a rap. And I was like, okay, well, what's that? Well, I'm just going to do my rap. And they got this rap, and it's the rap that they always do. It's their, sort of their, their shtick. And they can go on for like 15 minutes doing a rap. And the rest of the time, they won't say boo. So I don't know. People are really interesting. I mean, sometimes you can call them odd or weird or whatever. But, you know, the nice thing to say is they're interesting. Except when they're boring or they don't want to pay attention to you. Or they want to interact with you. I mean, I could go on. It's been 22 minutes. If you want me to do more videos, just give me a like a thumbs up or something or a comment or, you know, sometimes it'll tell me there's a view. But in the end, that's my rant for this morning. And I got nine minutes till noon, so it's still this morning. Um, see you later. And, you know, I got many different names. I'm Bobby Burrows. And, you know, I'm also Beasley the Wizard. So enjoy, and, you know, you can come and watch my band sometime. My band's name is Rio de... de, de I can't even say it. Rio de Janeiro Warlocks. And, you know, have we performed yet? No, we haven't performed yet. Do I have any, any other members of my band? No, there's just me. I am Rio de Janeiro Warlocks, and that's the name of my band. It's not like, you know, a single entity, because sometimes I'm multiple personalities. There you go, so... Welcome to my world, and you really I get like look at my bad, my bad hair. It's just terrible, bad head, and uh, that's why I wear hats. See you later.